Resource Watch is brought to you in association with Tebe Investment Corporation. Hello and welcome. This week we look at an exciting investment in zinc mining in South Africa and Namibia. I'm Nozi Pombandra and this is Resource Watch. Global gold demand dropped 2.5% to 929 tonnes in the third quarter compared to last year. The World Gold Council attributes this to decreased gold jewellery buying as well as bar and coins. However, it noted that central bank purchases of gold, while slower year on year, increased for the 15th straight quarter. Anglo Gold Ashanti, which reported a sharp fall in third quarter earnings earlier this month, now wants to cut jobs by offering staff voluntary severance packages. This as it feels the pressure of a lower gold price, inflationary pressures and higher tax charges. Longman, the world's third largest platinum producer, posted a loss for its 2014 financial year after suffering a massive loss of production during a five-month strike this year. CEO Ben Magara says the strike cost Longman $307 million and the company is looking at savings of more than 2 billion rands over the next three years by boosting productivity and reducing costs. Vedanta Resources, uh, the London-listed diversified mining company, will be investing $782 million over three years, this to develop an open-pit zinc mine in Hamsburg, South Africa, as well as the conversion of the Scorpion Zinc Refinery in neighboring Namibia. I spoke to Kusho Kamara, the CEO of Vedanta Zinc International. <music> Kishwa, thank you for making the time to join us. Maybe for the benefit of our viewers, just remind us once again about the practical uses of zinc. Thank you. Uh, zinc, as you know, is, is one of the noble metals which is responsible for uh, anti-corrosive property. And zinc uh, normally goes with the steel industry. And zinc helps in galvanizing the steel in the GPGC sheets. And it goes in making alloys like your brass uh, is copper and zinc and zinc goes further downstream in terms of uh, medication and it supports healthcare services. So zinc has a variety of uses, but 70-75% global of zinc demand goes into galvanizing and alloy making. Mm. It certainly looks like there's a lot of practical uses, but what do the supply and demand dynamics on the global front look like right now? See, currently the world is producing around 14 uh, million tons of zinc and uh, in the next, uh, maybe I would say three to five year period, uh, there are some large zinc mines, including one of ours, which is the Lachine mine, which is coming into closure. And this would, um, if, you, if I go with the Wood McKinsey report, over the next five years, you will have uh, some significant uh, capacity issues in the supply side. Mm. So uh, from our perspective, uh, and we are one of Hindustan Zinc, which is our parent company, is a, a unit in India. Uh, we produce about one million ton of zinc today, and we're expanding it to 1.2 million tons. Uh, which is close to about, I would say, 10% of the, 8 to 9% of the global demand. Mm. But what's constraining supply? Why are there going to be supply issues in the future? Uh, zinc, over a period of time, now this is a much longer history. If you look at a 20-year period, zinc has been under-invested as, 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 a, as a resource, and most of the investments have gone over the gold, platinum, mm. I would say, even the copper business. Mm. And uh, it is just a cycle where everybody has to sort of rethink, and the global zinc prices also haven't supported much in terms of investment. So that has been both the demand side and supply side uh, mismatches which have uh, mm. contributed to significant capacity gaps coming in the next three years. So a quick look into the demand side of that uh, particular equation. Where do you see demand coming from in particular if we were to look at specific markets that we can speak to? Demand will continue to be there between 2 to 3 percent growth, global demand. And most of the demand, if I look at from the uh, global perspective, mm. the Asian markets will drive the growth for, for the times to come. And uh, there are significant capacities coming also in, in Europe, capacity deficits coming, the, the shortfalls are coming in European side, mm. as well the Australian supply side, the capacities are coming down. So the demand being robust in Asia, uh, the growth remaining robust for the short term, I would say next five years, 
it will continue to be a, a, a demand driven by the Asian markets. So you're saying it's an, an overlooked investment arena, but certainly one that Vedanta has decided to step up to the plate in. 782 million US dollars in total investment, that's a big figure. Let's talk about how uh, that's actually going to be allocated and how that's going to benefit the production of zinc from Southern Africa. We came back in 2011 when Anglo divested their assets uh, mm. in uh, uh, South Africa as well as Namibia and Ireland. Uh, we acquired these assets from Anglo in 2011 and since then the flagship project of Humsburg has been worked upon and uh, this is a project in which uh, uh, we see a lot of uh, uh, core, core support to be brought from our Vedanta group of companies where we are very strong in driving the zinc growth uh, back at home. So uh, we, are, we are significant players in zinc and that yeah. is our core business and therefore I would say uh, from our perspective, um, Humsburg has always been on the radar and uh, we have done in the last three years uh, our entire team of employees along with the project teams. They have done a significant amount of detailing because this project is not an uh, easy one. Yeah. It, is, uh, it has got some challenges over its uh, or constitution including the manganese, high manganese which has been spoken about mm. uh, over the last five years that this project has got significant challenges and the project team have overcome that with the help of uh, our refinery in Scorpion Mines in Namibia and therefore it's a complementary uh, support created by developing Humsburg and extracting manganese out of the circuits mm. by the Scorpion refinery which is, which is basically complementary to each other in yeah. terms of uh, supporting the mine coming to fruition. It certainly sounds like there's a lot hanging on the success of Hamsburg, both in terms of uh, the investment that you've already made and the challenges you've already had to surmount. How significant is this going to be uh, on the Vedanta balance sheet? Is this going to be a game changer for you? And that's essentially the question. I would say it, um, from our perspective, it's certainly a game changer in the zinc international business in which uh, our capacities are coming down in Lachine mines in Ireland, where we are going to close down a mine in the next one year time. So it's very important to balance the global capacities by bringing a capacity back and that's what this 250,000 tons expansion of Humsburg would do. It will bring back that uh, volume into the market as well as uh, provide further opportunity for the upside because this is, uh, as you know, this is a 215 million ton ore body having about 15 million tons of uh, metal. Mm. So uh, we would see that over the next this is a, a life of mine beyond 40 to 50 years. Mm. So we see a huge opportunity for us to continue to invest and explore that old body. And uh, we are very fortunate uh, that uh, we have all the expertise within the in-house in terms of bringing the beneficiation story back to uh, Southern African continent. And we will make sure that uh, most of the metal that is made from here is either given to the local market, which we are already servicing, as well as to the international markets. Let's talk a little bit more about beneficiation because we're seeing a very strong policy push to get that uh, kind of movement going. Uh, to what extent uh, have you been able to really get real traction uh, around beneficiation? How far are you in terms of your, the targets you've set for yourself in this regard? Um, okay, let me give a little philosophical issue where Vedanta operates from. In whichever countries and whichever commodities we operate, by and large, uh, we look at beneficiating the ultimate uh, product. Mm. So let's say in the case of copper, we would like to take it to the copper cathodes and finally to the copper rods. And similarly in case of zinc, mm. we would like to take it to the zinc ingots and, and deliver it to the market. So that is our philosophy and we will continue to work on that. Of course there are some challenges in the short term, as you know in South Africa and all of us are seized of the uh, support that we need uh, in terms of uh, reliable and cheap power from the, from the ESCOM. And, uh, and all of us at this point of time are facing that, 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 that crisis. Uh, however, uh, we are still very positive about uh, the future of South Africa where energy demands will continue to grow. Mm. And there has to be, we have to find creative solutions of uh, public-private partnership, uh, which will be a very cornerstone of, of uh, creating that uh, increased supply into the market. And that would be also uh, fundamental to, for us to ensure that uh, the future growth in Humsburg, as we yeah. looking at a 50-year horizon, that we should be in a position to uh, invest in a smelter, a refinery, a power plant if required within the country right. and beneficiate the end product. And, 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 and when you do a beneficiation, the story goes beyond zinc. It goes yeah. into uh, small and medium enterprises. They have to spring up. Yeah. For example, if you do a, a zinc ingot, you have to produce sulfuric acid. I'm certainly out of time, so I'm just going to squeeze this in because I've got you in the seats. If we go and we look at that part of the country, it's possibly the poorest part of South Africa. Yes. Um, to what extent are we seeing a trickle down of the revenues uh, that are generated from what's mined from the ground to the poorest of the poor that make up the communities in and around the Northern Cape? I would say there's a very big challenge there and, uh, and we believe that um, a lot, can, lot more can be done 
in the area of healthcare, education, as well as social infrastructure for the people. And I think we'll play our part in supporting the government in whatever that needs to be done in and around our mining area. And we are already well networked in Pofadar, Pella, as well as Uppington to manage this, this level of change that is required. And we will we'll commit this uh, support for the country. Kishore, thank you for making the time to join us. Thank you very much. Now, as you heard from Kishore Kumar, energy is a big challenge to the mining industry in Southern Africa, and in particular here in South Africa. Now, Gem of the Week is an energy storing solution, this to combat load shedding and high electricity prices. South Africa's rich vanadium deposits could become part of the solution to Africa's energy shortages. The metal is increasingly being used in battery technology globally, creating cost-effective ways to manage power shortfalls. These batteries are based on flow technology. basic idea around a flow battery is an analogy would be a dam. You can pump water up into the top of a dam and that is energy. And then you run it through the turbines to create power. In our case, we basically have a very small one of these. So the energy is stored in liquid, separate from the power component. All other batteries, you think of your lithium battery, it's all combined. The power and the energy is combined. But with a flow battery, you separate the two. The result of separating liquid and power is the ability to extend the battery's duration by topping up liquid, bypassing the more expensive alternative of buying another battery. How we differ from other flow batteries is the unique component called vanadium and vanadium is used to make steel we mine it in South Africa it comes from fly ash there's lots of slag that's from steel mills that's out there so there's a waste product as well the key application of flow batteries is any site where the electricity grid is weak currently imagery supplies telecommunications and renewable energy sites located far from stable power supply another use is in mining sites of a mining house that we're in fact talking to now, they lose power for four to six hours a day. What do they do? They shut down or they start diesel engines. By putting this in, you get around that problem of having to run the diesels. So on a levelized cost of energy basis, you save a lot. It becomes a very, very competitive force. And that's it for this week's show. Do stay in touch. Keep the conversation alive by following me at Nozi Pombandra. And of course, using our hashtag, Resource Watch. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.